Welcome to Camping with the Coles. It's Thursday, April 13th, 2023, and we are heading off to Rondo Provincial Park. It's a balmy, beautiful blue sky, warm 21 degrees. It's supposed to get up to 27 today. Yeah. But that's here. At Rondo, it's probably going to be about 10 degrees uh, cooler because it's along the lake. We'd like to start off by thanking Ontario Parks for sponsoring this video and for making right. this trip possible. Uh, we are going to be talking about the benefits of early spring camping and we're going to share with you some tips so that you can make the most out of your camping adventure. We're Cheryl and Ben Coles. We've been camping together for over 35 years. A few years ago, we started doing video reviews of Ontario Provincial Parks to help people when researching places to visit. We are now in season five of our park reviews. We hope this helps you in deciding where to have your next camping adventure. Now let's go camping with the Coles. We only get one life, I wanna make it count, honey. Come on now and take my hand. We have a special guest with us. We have a new member of the Coles family. Oh, there, there he is. is. It's Jax. Hey, Jax. We got him from the Humane Society about a week and a half ago. He's an 11 month old golden doodle. Yeah. And if you would have seen our Instagram posts, he had a lot of hair two days ago and he got shaved right down. So he is all set. He's got his camping coat. He'll be good for going in the water and in the sand and having all sorts of doggy fun. six kilometers from the park uh, about a kilometer ago we were at 25 degrees celsius we now are at 23 degrees celsius and we're going to see that drop considerably as we get closer to the park it sits on lake erie and the water in lake erie is still very cold and it's cooling off the air let's watch the temperature change Hello. Hey, how are you? Good. Good. Welcome. It's going to fill up super fast. This water pressure is amazing. Oh, no. Come here, buddy. You only turn on the water at the fill stations if the temperature is going to be above zero degrees Celsius. They're on the municipal water system here. They don't want to turn on the water and have pipes break. That causes a lot of problems. So uh, if it's going to be around freezing when you're coming, the morning that you're uh, arriving, you should call into the park and just check with them, see if the fill station is open. If it's not open, you might want to bring jugs of water or you might want to fill up uh, at home if you can spare the weight. great thing about this time of year is the availability of sites. You don't have to book five months in advance to camp in April. We had a look at the uh, site for reserving last month and there's 164 sites at this park and there was only 13 sites reserved and that's one month out. That's only 8% of the park reserved. I had a look last night to see how it is. 35 sites in the entire park are reserved. That's 21%. Some of you can remember the good old days of just showing up at a park and getting a site. Well, you go in April or the beginning of May, you can do that. You can show up here right now and have your choice of sites, electric, non-electric, whatever. It's awesome. The park store isn't open for this season yet, but the Bayview General Market is. Also has a liquor store and ice cream. We 
They're here. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, we would like to welcome Benita and Steve to Rondo Provincial Park. They will be camping with us this weekend. And I actually went to grade school with Steve, so I've known him for a couple of years. Yo. <laughs> <laughs> we might a be few doing years. Singing at the campfire too. Yeah. So we'll, we'll do some singing at the campfire. Too. Accountant by day, musician by night. That's, yep, right. that's right. All yeah. right. So we're looking forward to it. And camper by weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. And they got their little guy. Yes, the little guy Max. Yeah. When we originally planned this video, we we're gonna be talking about camping in the cold weather and everything you can do to keep yourself warm in the cold weather. That's what normally early spring camping is. Again, it's April 13th. Instead, I guess we should be talking to you about sunscreen and the best shorts to wear, the best sandals to wear, because it's like summer camping. It's a uh, record heat wave right now. Uh, I think in town it's like 27 degrees. Here it's about 21 degrees right now. Just incredible. Except different from summer, there's no bugs. There's nothing that's gonna bite you in the air right now. And that's the best part of coming right now. That is the absolute best part. Black flies are normally prevalent mid-May to mid-June. Mosquitoes mid-May to mid-September. Deer flies and horse flies, those great big biting ones in uh, July and August. And ticks, well, ticks, they're around any time of year as long as it's above freezing. So there's always ticks. So you still have to watch out for the ticks now. Now let's talk about some tips for early spring RV camping. The number one tip I can give you is watch the weather forecast. Check to see what you're getting into. In the spring, you never know what you're gonna get. Right now, it's like over 20 degrees Celsius, but it could easily be below freezing. So you need to know what you're getting into. And that's for several reasons. Uh, one of the big ones is your RV water system. If it's getting below freezing, you need to prepare for that. Now we have a three season trailer, which means uh, good for spring, summer, and fall, and can go into colder weather. The reason it's called three season is because it has a underbody uh, made of corrugated plastic that goes underneath the trailer and it covers all the piping underneath. Furnace has three vents in the main compartment of the trailer and it has one vent that goes into the underbelly. So it heats the underbelly of the trailer where the plumbing system is. So if you're getting below freezing, you know, minus three, minus four, minus five for a few hours at night, if you've got the furnace on, you're gonna heat up that underbelly and you should be okay. Now I know a lot of people, they would prefer to use an electric heater because then they're using the park's electricity rather than their own propane. And that's perfectly fine if it's above zero. But if it's below zero, you definitely wanna be using your furnace because you need to get that air blowing underneath into the underbelly. Another option is just keep your RV water system winterized. Keep the RV plumbing antifreeze in the system, or if you blow out the system to uh, get all the water out, just keep air in it. Keep it like that. Just keep it winterized. But then you have to realize you're not gonna be using any of the uh, plumbing system. You're not gonna use the toilet. You're not gonna use the sinks or anything. That way, uh, you're gonna have to bring your own water in jugs or bring empty jugs and uh, you can fill up your jugs, uh, the comfort stations, even if the taps are closed because it's below freezing, the comfort stations will have taps that are working and you can fill up some water jugs. A good recommendation to keep it comfortable in the trailer is to keep a couple of windows cracked open at night. It doesn't matter how cold it is, you wanna have a couple windows open a little bit, which helps with the humidity. You don't wanna get a buildup of humidity in the trailer at night. Another option is to have a dehumidifier. Pack warm or winter clothing. Sitting around the fire and it can get very cold. Your front will be warm from the fire, but your back will be cold. A winter coat, toque, and mitts are must-haves. Plan your clothing in layers. It could be 20 during the day, but zero at night. Dress in layers to easily adjust to the temperature. Be prepared for the rain. Most likely there will be rain at some point. The trails will be muddy and could be flooded as well. 
raincoat, rain boots, and possibly an umbrella if needed. Scout your campsite for puddle pooling and work around it. Keep your firewood dry. Keep it in the truck, in a Rubbermaid bin, under a tarp, under your awning. So if you have a solar power system, springtime is the perfect time to get that set out. Um, there's low tree canopy this time of year, so you take full advantage of the sunlight and get all your power. I've been in Ontario parks for 20 years, but um, just Rondo 6. I can say that the birding here at Rondo is better than any other park in the provincial system. Um, it's rivaled only by Peely, oh, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. Peely is very popular, but some people find that it's just overpopular. It's mm -hmm. very crowded, um, and so a lot of people come here after being at Peely and say it's nice to have the space and it's not as crowded, um, but they get the same birding experience. Yeah. In May, the if you were to look out here and into the back bushes, mm -hmm. um, there'd be like full warblers all along and they're super bright and colorful. And that's really what people are coming for. Like mm -hmm. the warblers, the tanagers, um, there's a chat that people always mm -hmm. really are interested in um, and those kinds of birds. And there's a little junco there. And we've started to see some of the songbirds coming back. Um, like the red-winged blackbirds are usually like one of the first ones that we see. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the warblers that we're waiting for typically start coming around like early May. Um, some like yellow-rumped warblers come back a bit sooner as well. Um, but by the second week of May, we're typically in our peak season. Okay. Um, and that's when we get the, the hordes of bird watchers from all over the world, really. Yeah. Um, each year we see people from Europe, Australia, the United States, um, all coming here to Rondo. It, as you can see, it's got a ton of boardwalks. Yeah. People really like boardwalks, mm -hmm. and boardwalks mean wetlands. So that increases the habitat, so it increases your diversity. It was great talking to Jess, uh, learning about the birding, but uh, another important thing is the squirrels at Rondo. And you think squirrels, they're everywhere, gray and black squirrels everywhere. Well, I read an article on the Parks blog uh, about a month or two ago, and uh, it's about squirrels at Rondo and, and how they've uh, kind of changed over the years. And it turns out that Jess was the author of that article. So it's pretty interesting. Back in 1894, when this park opened. It is the uh, oldest, or the second oldest park yep. in the provincial park system. Uh, the oldest is Algonquin in 1893. When this park opened, all the squirrels here were black. They're part of the species of the Eastern gray squirrel, but uh, all the ones here were black. Turns out that the black squirrels, they uh, mostly go to the Northern part of their area and the gray squirrels go to the Southern part of the area. Well. There's a guy who's park superintendent in charge of the area around the White House and the grounds there. And I believe it's called the National, the National Zoological Park in Washington. Well, he really wanted some black squirrels. They only had gray squirrels there. So he made a deal, this is back in 1906, with the park superintendent of Rondeau. And they traded squirrels. So the U.S. sent a pair of gray squirrels to Rondo, and Rondo sent a pair of black squirrels down there. So then there's black squirrels on the White House property. 
Well, that, that happened for uh, many times. They were trading squirrels, black and gray squirrels. Well, then the black squirrels became so popular. <laughs> What's going on? Jax is crunching on something. Oh, no. <laughs> well, the black squirrels became so popular, and there is such an abundance of them at Rondo, and they really didn't have a handle on conservation and stuff like that then. They started shipping out the black squirrels, and they were selling them a pair for $5, Today's money, that'd be like $120. And they'd sell them to a whole bunch of different places, um, other parks, uh, petting zoos, things like that. And they'd sell them for $5 a pair plus shipping. And uh, they were getting rid of all the black squirrels and sending them to all the places that didn't have any black squirrels. Well, that all ended in the 1930s when a new park superintendent came in and said, you know what, this isn't the way to do things. And so they stopped doing it then. But anyway, when you look at Rondo now and you see the gray squirrels, you have to think, are these direct descendants of the squirrels that came from the White House? <laughs> yeah, they might be. So that's the story of the squirrels at Rondo. It's pretty interesting. So Jess, the chief park naturalist, she talked to us about the birding and talked to us about the Festival of Flight. Here's a little bit more details of the Festival of Flight. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna read it just so I get it right. Mm -hmm. uh, the Festival of Flight is from May 6th to the 21st, 2023. Happens every year in the beginning of May. It's the annual celebration of the songbird migration with daily expert-led bird hikes, birders breakfast and lunch, a 24-hour big day birding competition, and much more. So these birds have a long stretch flying north over Lake Erie. When they get to Rondeau, they get to the uh, north shore of Lake Erie, it's time for them to sit down and rest. And that's where they come and fill into Rondeau and just fill up the trees. Mm -hmm. Now we're here in early April, so, well, we're mid-April now. Um, it's not full yet. It's gonna get full into May. Just talked about uh, how they shut down the one road. Yeah. And so it's totally accessible, wheelchairs, anything, um, because it's a road. And you just watch the birds fly over top because there's no canopy right over top the road. And she just said huge flocks of birds. And there's 334 different bird species that have been seen in this park. So this is a birder's paradise. They, people come worldwide. Yeah. Yep. And what I've learned about birding and how we are at birding is that I am not a birder and I am not a photographer. I tried to take pictures. I see the bird. I set up the camera, look in the camera, look back, and the bird's gone. Yeah, so, so you can pass on that. Yeah, I apologize for that. I don't have any good bird pictures, but Jess is nice enough. She's sending us some uh, stock photos of birds, yes. Uh, yes. pictures of birds that were taken Let's here. Just pretend we took them. Yeah, we'll pretend that we took those pictures and see what an amazing photographer I am. <laughs> yeah. Hi, it's Steve and Benita. We're from uh, Punky Doodles Corners. And um, I know uh, Cheryl and Ben and, and uh, thought we could write a little theme song for Camping with the Coles. So here we go. Camping with the coals. Let's go. Let's, Let's go. go. Let's explore Ontario parks. So much to see and do. Your adventure awaits. Cheryl and Ben can guide the way. Camping with the coals. Let's, Let's go. go. <laughs> Good boy. 
That's a good boy. Good boy, Jax. One of the tips I wanted to talk to you about is hiking in cold weather. Normally at this time of year, it's a high of 10 to a low of two. So uh, you're usually hiking in colder weather. Now it's ridiculous right now. I'm in t-shirt. It's beautiful, sunny, warm, highly unusual for this time of year. So we'll still talk about hiking in cold weather. The trick for doing that is to dress in layers. You don't want to wear anything too bulky. Um, I know when you get out to the trailer, you're standing outside, um, it might feel really cold if it's, you know, two degrees or zero degrees or something like that. It's gonna feel really cold and you might want to uh, put on a big heavy type winter jacket. I recommend not to do that. You wanna dress in layers so that you can easily take off layers as you're walking along and then add layers as you need them. So bottom layer, should usually be something that is moisture wicking. Usually that's polyester. Uh, brand name is Under Armour. They make a lot of stuff like that. Uh, this shirt that I'm wearing right here, it's some no-name thing, and it's uh, polyester. Polyester is a great base layer for, uh, for uh, hiking. This type of thing, if it gets wet, it dries very quickly and it doesn't stay wet for long. So it's really nice. If you're wearing a cotton t-shirt, cotton t-shirts are really bad for holding in the moisture and holding in the sweat. They take forever to dry. And when they do get wet, if you get cold, you're gonna freeze wearing those shirts because then you got cold wetness up against you. Um, the next layer, another thin layer, you could make it another uh, moisture wicking thing, or if you want, you can put cotton on, on that layer, uh, a thinner shirt or button up shirt or something like that. The outer layer kind of depends on the weather. Um, it's cold and windy. I would suggest putting something on like a, uh, a rain jacket type thing that uh, will block the wind and block the rain, of course, if you, uh, uh, are going to have a nice sunny day and you know there's not going to be any rain at all then if you want to wear a hoodie or something that's uh that uh, is cotton you can do that packable jackets are always best because you can pop them in your backpack if you don't need it yeah they don't take up much room right and they're nice and thin and they block the wind and uh, just blocking the wind can help a lot in keeping you warm so as you're uh, hiking along you want to take off layers because the goal is to not sweat uh, so you take off the layers, then when you get to a spot that you want to have lunch or you have a nice lookout or something, you're probably going to cool down because uh, you're not going to be walking anymore. That's when you can start putting some layers back on again. Boy. So that's my tip for uh, hiking in colder weather. Um, can't show it to you right now because we are living the dream. Springtime, it's the most wonderful time of the year. We're escaping the winter doldrums. Mother nature is coming alive once again. Trees are budding. The, the flowers, flowers are, are blooming. blooming. All the animals are giving birth. I thought the most wonderful time of year was Christmas. That's the second most wonderful time. Okay, this is a wonderful time of year because it lets us know the camping, camping season is, is starting. Yes, and I love it because it's not busy. Look at how beautiful this day is right now. It's gorgeous. We're out here getting some vitamin D, some sunshine. Just what the doctor prescribed. Oh yeah, after that 
winter, it's just amazing being out here. Yes. So if you're in need of a little uh, TLC for yourself. It'll pick me up. Time to go camping. Time to go camping. And no time Rondo, better than the present. Yeah, Rondo is the earliest seasonal park to open, mm -hmm. opening on April 7th. Yep. And it's just the 14th right now. So it's just been open for a week. But uh, Well worth it. Yeah, come on down. Not busy at all. Parks open year round that allow for early spring camping are Algonquin. New Lake. New Lake Algonquin. Yeah. Arrowhead. McGregor. Pinery. And Killarney. 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 The best. Yeah, we'll be going there this year. Mm-hmm. Looking so then there's parks. Most parks open in uh, in May at some point. Yeah. Every park is different. If you want to find out when uh, a Just park look opens. Look on Ontario Parks website. You yeah. can find out. They, they give you the, the uh, openings and closings for every park. Mm -hmm. Parks that open in April, uh, April 7th is Rondo, which is where we are right now. Mm -hmm. April 14th is Wheatley and... Craig Leith. Craig Leith. <laughs> I don't know why I can't remember Craig Leith, but Wheatley and Craig Leith yes. open on April 14th. Then April 21st is Sable Falls. Right. We did early camping there, I think. Yeah. Well, it was and, beginning of May. Yeah. But. And April 28th. Is Sandbanks and Inver Huron. Yeah. So those are some great parks mm -hmm. that you can get to in April before the main camping season begins in May. Uh, and like we said, beat those crowds. Beat the crowds. Beat the mosquitoes and black oh, flies and deer flies and all that no sort bugs. of stuff. Love it. Yeah. Remember when we were hiking and I was talking about not wearing cotton, trying to wear polyester? Well, it goes the same thing for kayaking or canoeing. Water's pretty rough out here. I'm getting splashed a lot. I'm not wearing anything that's cotton. So this stuff will dry in the wind very quickly too. It'll be dry, you know, 15, 20 minutes after I get out of here. So uh, that's something that's really nice. Plus it's not real heavy. As far as wearing a PFD, you should always wear your PFD when you're on the water. I know we were bad a couple of years ago. We hardly ever wore them. We just kept them in the kayaks with us, but we wear them now. And especially at this time of year, we want to wear a PFD because uh, this water is cold, colder than uh, it is in the summer for sure. If you go in, you want to be able to float and then uh, be able to swim to shore because your body will start slowing down in the cold water. So uh, you don't have to struggle to keep afloat and to swim to shore. You just want to swim to shore. So the beach is definitely a lot bigger than it was a couple of years ago when we were here. The uh, water would come right up to this uh, line of reeds here before. There's really no spot to put a chair. And actually, do you remember when we were last here, like in 2020? Mm -hmm. I had uh, I had longer hair then. Do you remember I went two years without cutting my hair? Yes, yeah. I, I had you do that. That's right. Remember the, the video clip that we did back then? <laughs> I think I should show that video clip. Oh God, no. <laughs> no, that video clip where we're in the water, you took the video. I did. I think because you really liked the video. No, so no, I didn't. <laughs> I'm going to treat you, Cheryl. No, and I'm going to show you that video again. <laughs> no, we're going to show it right now. <laughs> I can't believe you just showed that video. You loved it. No, I don't. <laughs> it's time for Cole's Notes for spring RV camping. So how did we feel about our first experience of really spring camping? Well, I gotta say, I think what we've <laughs> learned from this is that if you're coming to Rondo Provincial Park in early to mid-April, you're guaranteed to get beautiful blue skies and temperature in the 20s. That's what As we've learned see. from this trip. Can you see? I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but yeah, it's just a perfect blue sky right now yeah. and sunshine. But you know what? It's not always going to be like that. No. And uh, But the same for summer. You're not always going to get perfect weather in summer either. Right. So big thing about spring camping is to be prepared. You want to be prepared for all sorts of weather. Uh, we of clothing, certainly but... never, yeah, we certainly never thought that we were going to be uh, needing shorts here. Mm -hmm. But uh, we did because mm -hmm. it was so nice. But we're we've also got winter clothing here. Yeah, yeah, you know, winter coats and toques and mitts. The evenings got a little chilly. Mm-hmm. 
So you need to be prepared for everything. Um, and uh, that's how Cheryl likes it. You yeah. like to be prepared for everything. Right I am. Yeah. <laughs> so we needed it for that type of weather. Yeah. We'd really like to thank Ontario Parks uh, for inviting us here. Uh, this was an amazing trip. Uh, we it was a great start to the season. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't have asked for a better start to our camping season. Uh, lots of trips planned this year, mm -hmm. but uh, this was a great way to start it off. It was awesome. We were able to do the exist pretty much everything that we would do in the summer, except for swimming. We did hiking, biking, kayaking. Yeah. The biking got a little bit limited because I had a mechanical problem with yeah. my uh, with my old mountain bike. Yeah. So I got to get that fixed. I, I don't have the ability to fix the bearing issue that is there, but... Uh, yeah, we really would have liked to done the bike ride from the campground yes. that takes you all the way out to the point at Rondo. So, I guess we're coming back again next year. We have to come back because I really wanted it. to do that bike ride. Yeah. It, it's a nice flat ride, um, not difficult at all, but unfortunately uh, my bike broke down before that happened. So that's a good excuse to come back. Yeah, absolutely. And it's not a nice like you park. really need one. Yeah, it's a great park. We'd also like to thank Punky Doodle Steve and Bonita for their uh, surprise with the uh, theme song for Camping with yes. the Coles. Yes, it's awesome. Uh, yeah, we just asked him if he'd play the guitar at the uh, campsite, uh, and we asked him that uh, a little bit before coming here, and he said, no problem, and then he created this whole song for us. Mm -hmm. So that was pretty amazing. We might hear that again. Yes. And our, our new-to-us dog, Jax, who's, what is he, almost, we've had him for almost two weeks now that we rescued. He did a lot better than expected. Yeah, he's um, only 11 months. We weren't we were expecting to be pretty wild and have a tough time with it. But he seemed to have a really good time. He loved it. We still have a few issues to work out with him, the kinks, but... A little bit of training to do. Yeah, but it worked out well. I think he's going to turn out to be a great camping dog, and I think you're going to see him in a lot of videos. Fingers crossed. <laughs> we'll, we'll probably have a little bit more dog content, too, now that we got a crazy puppy that likes to camp. Yeah. And thank you, Jess, for taking us on the birding hike. We learned a ton of information. Um... And it was fun. Yeah, yeah. We've never done anything like that before, so it's always good to learn new things. You learned a little bit more about birds. I did. And they're not just Cinderella birds and <laughs> and caw, caw birds. I know. So I have to put on my bird thinking cap when I'm out there and be a little more intuitive of what I'm listening to. In a few weeks from now, the birding here is going to get incredible. It's just the beginning of birding season now. But come May, uh, especially with the festival flight that they have going on here, it is going to be an amazing time for the birds. So if you're into that sort of thing, come on down to Rondo or really most of the parks uh, along Lake Erie because uh, it's going to be uh, tremendous for birding. Mm -hmm. I just love waking up to these birds yeah. in the morning. We woke up at 6 in the morning because of the sound of the birds because yeah. they were so like, loud. Oh, this is such a nice sound. <laughs> yeah, it was a pleasant sound. It wasn't a bad sound. It was a really nice, pleasant mm -hmm. sound. Mm -hmm. So that's another bonus. So the park wasn't very full, but it seemed we had a ton of viewers here who approached us and said hello and enjoyed our videos. So thank you to everyone who we talked to. And in two weeks time, we'll have a video out to help you get the camping season started. And that is how to do a setup and take down at the campsite, especially for our viewers, travel trailers. Yeah, all the new newbies out there. Yeah, and then after that, we're gonna start into the park reviews. And the season is really going to get rolling then. Woo. Excited. So we'll see you in a couple weeks. Bye. Bye. Welcome to Camping with the Coles. Good start. <laughs> the date. Oh, oh start over. <laughs> They're waving at us. That's funny. Right as we're recording. Oh, I might have got that in there. Camping with the Coles. Hey, you guys didn't do the let's go. Oh, we're supposed to do let's <laughs> oh, go then. Oh, we're supposed to do that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, start right. again. Well, I won't from? do my thing. We're, we're learning as we go. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'll slow it down. Camping with the Coles. Let's, let's go. go. <laughs>